वेलकम टू द थर्टी सेवेंथ लेक्चर ऑफ दिस लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन इंटरनेशनल आर्बिट्रेशन प्रैक्टिस दिस लेक्चर इज अ पार्ट ऑफ चैप्टर थ्री एंड रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू इनोकेशन ऑफ आर्बिट्रेशन एंड डिफेंसिस इट हेज बीन क्वाइट सम टाइम सिंस द लेक्चर्स इन दिस लेक्चर सीरीज वेर रिलीज वी विल कंटिन्यू टू पब्लिश लेक्चर्स इन दिस लेक्चर सीरीज इन रेगुलर इंटर्स फ्रॉम आर वॉक In the last lecture, we discussed defense arguments regarding the entitlement to rely on the investment treaty. In this lecture, we deal with jurisdictions relating to the scope of a treaty. There are various ways in which a treaty's scope could be dealt with. The first method is to narrowly define the meaning of the term investment in a treaty. The second method is to have a broad general definition of investment. Specify that the treaty as a whole applies only to a subset of investment. For example, in a scope clause, Article two point one of India France B I T nineteen ninety seven is a typical example. Third method is to maintain applicability of the treaty to such all investments, limiting specific substantive obligations to a subset of investments. Fourth method is to specify carve out some. Coverage through separate exclusion provisions. The jurisdiction of the tribunal regarding the scope of the treaty is called jurisdiction regione materiae, literally translated from Latin as the nature of the matter, and in this context, jurisdiction according to the subject matter. In Latin, it's pronounced more or less as regione materiae. An example of exclusion in a treaty is Article three point six of. Brazil India BIT of 2020 specifically excludes a law or measure pertaining to taxation compulsory licensing government sub subsidies etc article 3.6 of Brazil India BIT 2020 states this treaty shall not apply to b any law or measure regarding taxation including measures taken to enforce taxation obligations c the issuance of compulsory licenses Granted in relation to intellectual property rights, or to the revocation, limitation, or creation of intellectual property rights, to the extent that such issuance, revocation, limitation, or creation is consistent with international obligations of parties under the mutual agreement. B. Government procurement by a party. E. Subsidies or grants provided by a party to vulnerable groups in accordance with its law. Likewise, there are situations where treaties could specify, specify they do not limit the power of the state, apply prohibitions or restrictions, or take action to protect essential security interests, public health, etc. Article Eleven, India Mauritius B I T nineteen ninety seven states, the provisions of this agreement shall not in any way limit the right of any contracting party. Apply prohibitions or restrictions of any kind, or take any other action which is directed to the protection of its essential security interests, or to the protection of public health, or the prevention of diseases in birds and animals or plants. Sometimes, it is explicitly or even implicitly mentioned that illegal investments are not protected under the treaty. In Cortec Mining Kenya Limited versus Republic of Kenya, the tribunal stated, for an investment such as a license, which is a creature of the laws of the host state, to qual qualify for protection, it must be made in accordance with the laws of the host state. This is an implicit recognition that investments protected under the treaty were legal investments. Example of explicit exclusion of illegal investments are in the Brazil India B I T 2020 and Germany Philippines B I T of 1998. Article 10 of the Brazil India B I T 2020 states: Nothing in this treaty shall require any party to protect investments made with capital or assets of illegal, illicit origin, or investments in the establishment or operation of which illegal acts have been demonstrated to occur, and for which national legislation provides asset forfeiture. Article two one of the Germany Philippines B I T nineteen ninety eight states: Each contracting state shall promote as far as possible investment in its territory by the investors of other contracting state and admit such investments in accordance with its constitution, laws, and regulations, as referred to in Article one, paragraph one. Such investment shall be accorded fair and equitable treatment. 
Now, Article 1.1 of the same BIT defines investment as term investment shall mean any kind of asset accepted in accordance with the respective laws and regulations of either government state. Construing the BIT, the tribunal in Fraport versus Philippines held Fraport knowingly and intentionally circumvented the ADL by means of secret shareholding agreements. As a consequence, it cannot claim to have made an investment in accordance with law, nor can it claim that high officials of the respondents subsequently waived the legal requirements and validated Fraport's investment. For the respondents' officials could not have known of the violation. Because there is no investment in accordance with law, the tribunal lacks jurisdiction rate rate unit material. So this is a case where a claim was brought against Philippines and Philippines relied on the ground that the investment to be made should be legal in nature. So that's all in this lecture. See you in the next one.